This is Real Life Conversation with the voice of the North. This is Night Owls with Alan Robson. Call 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. And, you know, it is a wonderful thing when you put a shout out and say we're going to be talking about health and fitness that from the gorgeous Geordie show, my first caller tonight is Nathan Honus. Hello, Nathan. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? You good? Yes, great. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling in. Really appreciate it. Uh, everybody's oh. looking towards... The, whether it's just for five minutes or whether they'll go the whole hog, well, that's to be seen. But everybody's focusing at the gym at the present moment. I guess you guys are pretty busy. It is. It all just goes a little bit nuts for the next couple of weeks. So how do you deal with it then? I mean, how, can, how do you make people keep it going? Because every now and then you'll hear somebody say, oh, but you get a great buzz once you get into it. But it's it's keeping them going until they can get to that buzz, isn't it? It is. I mean, the statistics show that people give up within the first 14 days. So right. it's in my interest to try to stop that statistic and improve it a little bit. Um, the first thing which I always tell, particularly people who just get into their health and fitness goals, particularly in January, yeah. is um, they've got to see it as a long-term thing. I always say, if you do things steadily, you'll get there definitely, rather than you know do it fast and not last. You know, so sure. cause some people just go all in. And then that's why they give up within 14 days because they do too much. Right, but you, the thing that everybody wants is they want to work hard at it for like three days, see a difference, be encouraged, and then crack on. But you can't see a, a difference in that kind of time. No, that's why it's so important to try to get them to set up their long-term goal and see it as a long-term goal rather than, like I said, this little short fix thing. It's so tough for people because... You know, over Christmas, they feel sluggish. And sure. obviously, it feels important in January because they know how sluggish they feel. Mm. No, that's absolutely right. Mind you, in the newspapers uh, over the last 24 hours, anybody that's thinking they can't lose a lot of weight should take a look at Adele. Have you seen that girl? Yeah, I mean, she looks amazing. Cool, yeah, she's maybe fantastic that's a... over time. And, I mean, she's always been quite a heavy set girl, and now she's got to be, I presume the shape that she's always wanted to be. How long, I mean, realistically, how long is that if if people do it properly? I'd say, really, you've got to set yourself about a year. I mean, if you set yourself a good 12 months, right, it will become more of a lifetime thing. It's when people just think, oh, I'll just start in January. And because they haven't set that long term, like you said, you know, they give up within 14 days. Sure. And then they just go back to old ways. It's all about, one of the key things is about changing little habits. Mm. You know, if you ask someone a question, what two things could they change mm -hmm. today which will make a big difference later? And if they start with them little small habits first, right, that will certainly end up being more in time, you know? Yeah, I mean, you you know that what it's like at this time uh, of the year. We've been used to, for certainly at least a fortnight, of eating all the crap that we shouldn't have ever in my life, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You pick and pick and pick across Christmas and New Year. That's it's yeah, what we do. do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the common things what I do first off, as soon as I set that goal of uh, getting back into my usual habit, mm. I clear my cupboard out and just get rid of all the junk food. <laughs> just get rid of it straight away. <laughs> yeah, because that's the temptation. The temptation is I'm feeling miserable, even if you've worked out, because. You don't come home after working out, certainly not at the beginning, thinking, ah, I feel incredible today. You come back feeling whacked, let's face it, because you haven't put your body through that for a while. Exactly, yeah. You got. And the other thing is you might be better off just getting to the gym first and having a gentle walk mm. and getting to it steady, steady rather than, like I said, looking like I'm going to start myself back tomorrow, in fact. Yeah. It's going to be my first proper workout. But I won't do what I did, say, uh, a month ago because I've had all that rest. Right. I'll go back to steady stuff first. Right. It'll take you a while just to, to warm up to get in the zone then, I suppose. Yeah, it will take me a couple of weeks to get back to what I was, say, three, four weeks before Christmas. Mm. Um, so even myself, who's used to training all the time, having that rest, you can't just go straight into it. You've got to steadily get there. Well, I mean, as, as being a gorgeous Geordie, you've got, you've got a lot to live up to. 
Yeah, speaking of that show, it went absolutely fantastic. We're going to do that this year, so oh, I'd like to come back and back on and explain yeah. about that later. Actually. Never, never a worry. Of course, you, of course, you can. Just let's let's look at this for those people who are already into either cycling or any any strand of fitness. One of the big deals now seems to be spinning, which is essentially oh, <laughs> get, getting on a bike. And spinning is, is what it's been, going as long as you can, as far as you can. Is that a good exercise for people who want to lose uh, any proportion of weight or is it for a certain type of, of weight loss? That's a good question, actually. I do think spinning is beneficial, but I don't think it's the only thing they should do. Right. Certainly if you're an office worker, because as you can imagine, your body will adapt to what you do most of the time. Yeah. So if you're sitting down all day, your body's going to, create a dominant lower back and a weak or protrude abdominals. Right. So then going to the gym and doing spinning, which is another sit down based of activity. Right. Probably right. not the best choice for an active uh, for someone who works in an office. Right. I think for an office worker it'd be better off doing something like body pump or something which is more aerobic y where it involves you uh, being on your feet. As right. opposed to sitting down. Gotcha. Now that makes that makes absolute sense. So let's let's throw another one at you because somebody else recently was talking about how uh, they they go to the gym but they kind of keep themselves to themselves. They don't necessarily say to any of the people there, "I want you to run a program for me and make sure that I stay." There was none of that. It was just they're going there on their own, sitting down, doing a bit of rowing, getting on a bike, running, walking a mixture of everything that's there, will that mm -hmm. get them where they want to be? Yeah, it certainly will do. They're doing a, a mixture of lots of different activities. That's really good. However, what I would advise is there's plenty of information out there. Mm. There's plenty of apps what you can get on your phones. Right. So even if, you're, if you want to keep yourself to yourself, which a lot of people will want to do that, sure. I would say maybe invest a little bit of time just to get a bit more education of what to do before you go to the gym. Right. And what about the, the eating and the drinking while you're there? Because I know people that have I've, I've seen them in gyms where they'll just undergo a session or they'll, they'll play two hours of non-stop sport like badminton or, uh, or they'll be up against the wall, you know, smacking the ball, and then they'll come uh -huh. straight off and they'll have a, ma a Mars bar and uh, like a, a milkshake. And you think, well, all the good's just been undone immediately there, I presume. Yeah, that is a shame that people kind of waste their uh, session time and then just go straight back to bad eating. Yeah. I mean, it is a feasible. It, it, after certainly a weight session, it's quite good to actually do some sort of protein snack. Right. So that's, you know, if you're going to have something natural like a wait until you get home and have a decent meal, some people choose to have the supplements like right. a whey protein. And obviously I'm all for that if that's going to help charge up the muscles. Um, the only thing really is about a bit more discipline with that. <laughs> but about all of that protein stuff, Nath, I, I get the impression it these bars are, are rather like you sweep out a hamster's cage, solidify it, and then eat it. I mean, they're they're not exactly. It's it's been Christmas. We've had flying saucers. We've had we've had ch chicken in its every form. We've had curries. We've had. All of the heinous foods that are on your naughty list, and then yes. it's just hard to then say I've worked out well. I shall treat myself with, with that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean <laughs> there, there's some actual products out there, supplements that are really tasty, and you almost feel like you're having something bad. Right. But you're right. There is some <laughs> claggy type of bars out there as well. So again, it's one of the things of. Um, looking at the package, making sure it's low in sugar, mm. um, make sure there's a good source of protein, which you can see that in the ingredients, Yeah, that making sure it's like around about 20 grams. And, you know, when you taste it, are you going to enjoy it? Because if you're not going to enjoy it, what's the point of yeah, having, say, absolutely. a processed supplement, you know? Talk me through the the fizzy drink thing, because we're told, and e even people like myself who've got diabetes, we're told, oh, you can have as many soft drinks as you like, as long as they're the diet ones, as long as they're the low, you know, they've, they've got no sugar in them. You can have as much as that as you like. Don't worry about it. And then there was something in the press just before Christmas saying, but they'll probably keep weight on you, which I thought, well, right. well hang yeah. on, you can't, you, can't, you can't say it's good for you, but it's probably good in comparison to the sugary drinks. I've, I've got no doubt that that's the case. 
But do they still put weight on you, the, the other ones, the, the low-calorie drinks? Well, they do say that the likes of these um, low-calorie drinks, they're still full of E numbers. Right. So it's still not proven exactly what they do. However, what they also will show in some articles, they say they can actually increase your appetite because obviously they taste like what the real deal would be. Mm. So it can increase your appetite having these low-calorie drinks. I always say I think you're better off going back to basics and then going back to just drinking water. Right. And then obviously you can have the likes of uh, hot drinks when you get home, like peppermint tea. Mm. These things have no caffeine in it whatsoever, so it's not going right. uh, to so encourage you to not sleep or mm. you know things like that. You know, but yeah, these uh, fizzy drinks. I think you're better off um, keeping them to the minimum, personally. Right. Okay. Now. Just to finish off with, Nathan, thank you very much for this. You've been great. The The average person listening to this who will not be going to the gym, because the gym people, they're going to go, they're going to do their thing, they're going to give it a try, and it's either going to work or it's not. But for those that, well, I'm not going to go to the gym, but I, I would like to be a little bit fitter, what tips have you got for those guys? Because there's a lot of them out there who either can't afford the gym membership because, let's face it, a lot of people on the cheeks of their buttocks and uh, a lot of others, well, I haven't got the time, I'm working flat out, but I would still like to lose a bit of weight. Any suggestions? Yeah, uh, I'll at least put out three times a week. Where if, if exercise is not for you and like the typical gym type of stuff, I would say at least go out for a walk for, say, 20 minutes three times a week. Right. And on top of that, if they can sort of get a little bit more education on doing a few stretches, mm -hmm. like I said, there's a lot of people who sit around these days, so I would advise doing some sort of hamstring stretch and some sort of lower back stretch at least right. to keep their bubble body supple. If they do them two things, I think that would be a great start for them. Fantastic. Well, we can't wait to see you looking gorgeous again. Thanks again, <laughs> Nathan. Appreciate it. And come back certainly and tell us about your next gorgeous Geordie show. No problems. Brilliant. Thanks for having me, Alan. No Cheers worries, there. man. Take care. Bye-bye. That was good. Yeah, uh, out of the blue, Nathan there. Brilliant. Good to hear from him on the night else. What are you going to do? Are you getting stuck into this or are you not? Or is this, oh, stop talking about fitness. Well, we're also going to be talking to somebody else who knows a bit about fitness a little bit later on. And knowing that this was like one of the hot topics of the moment, we're going to be talking to Joe Wicks a bit later on. So if you're a fan of Super Handsome Male. Uh, he's going to be on the show a little bit later on. We've got Dave from South Shields next. Hi, Dave. Hi, Alan. Hello, Dave. Yes, I've just put my crisps and my glass of wine to one side now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just until you finish talking to me and you'll pick it back up again. Good man. Oh, I'll need it after that. No <laughs> so what can we do for you, mate? Uh, it's first thing, I, I just wanted to thank you for the, the Jack Sabaretti CD that you sent us before Christmas. Yeah, what did you think? I was very pleasantly surprised, to be honest. Th um, this I, is... I, I, I didn't think it would be my cup of tea, but I can appreciate the craft of the songs, and uh, yeah, good I also think he, he could be the son of Joe Cotter on some of them as well. Absolutely. Now, this is the weird thing, and again, I, I got, into, got into Jack Sabaretti early doors... And he, he'd released a couple of albums that had really beautifully written songs, but they just didn't take off. Either he was on the wrong label or he wasn't being yeah. pushed in the right kind of area because it's all about the money, as you know. And yeah, of But I kept listening, and his music just kept getting better and better. So knowing, you know, your rock background, uh, mm -hmm. he's a pop guy, but he's got that edge. He's just got that. Yeah, no, thing. I really like it, and, and more important, the wife likes it as well. Well, the, hey, hey, well, the world is a better place because of it. Oh, eh? Of course. <laughs> Glad you well, liked it, was, it anyway, no worries. Okay, well, I wanted to mention to you was um, just something uh, light-hearted, really. Mm -hmm. I was um, I was reading something the other day about the um, the musical heritage of the North East. Mm. Um, and, of course, I'm old enough to remember the animals. Oh, right. And uh, you know, and then then we've had the likes of Mark Knopfler and Sting, Linda Spawn, mm -hmm. and then uh, we might have started drifting a little bit. <laughs> and, and I started thinking of sort of you know people that should have been from the northeast. Uh, and I, what I was thinking was we've got, we've got people like the Walker Brothers. 
Well, and because they're from Wagga. The Wagga yeah. brothers, we should have. Yeah, absolutely. You've got, you got gay bikers on us, it. <laughs> and, and even bad manners. M- manners, metro station, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and of course, then my mind went into godlike territory in that it, it, it started working in really mysterious ways. <laughs> And I thought some of this, your, your, your listeners might like to pick up on and come up with things of their own, but okay. I came up with a list of things um, uh, some of them they might like. Okay. Um, for mm-hmm. instance, and some of these would be good names for um, tribute acts, I thought, as well. Right. Uh, start off with Jaro Toll. Right. You've got Heaven 17. Heaven 17, brilliant. Very good. Gates Head Dead. Right. And then you got like Go West I Hope. <laughs> and one of my favourites I thought of was Jasmine Decker and the Aces. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, and then a few more, you've got Howden Wayne Wright the Third. Oh, my goodness. Long Benton Baldry. <laughs> uh, for our Sunderland people, you've got Cheryl Crow Tree. Right. Uh, and then Killing West Joke. <laughs> Wishbone Ashington. Right. And a bit further afield, you could have Whitby Houston <laughs> and Beric Clapton. Brilliant. Beric Clapton. Who wouldn't go and see Beric Clapton? No, no. But, uh, <laughs> but I just thought some of your listeners might need like to sort of carry it on and maybe bring it a bit more up in here because all, all mine are tend to be sort of old. Yeah, no, I know. It, we did a thing a few years ago where we did a... If every film ever made was was set in the northeast, and you got things like Lobley Hills Cop and yeah, all that exactly. kind of stuff, um, the the a fistful of gyros, I think somebody mentioned as well. So, hey, if anybody wants to get in with this, if every band and every artist in the world was named uh, after something in the northeast, northeast seventeen, well, there's one. Um, yep. If it's all, you see how easy it is. If you can think of anything that you want to pale in. If every act was essentially a northern act, and you know when you were talking about all of the northern acts that actually did come up over the past 20, 30 years, you named yeah. the, you named the Whoppers, obviously, like you did. And to be honest, I've past few days I've been listening to some of the best of of Brian Ferry and Blamey. He's now done some tremendous things over the years. Oh, uh, he's done some wonderful stuff. Amazing, yeah. absolutely. Amazing. But it, it makes you forget about the little one-hit wonders because there was a few of the club acts that came through and and had one-hit wonders. And uh, do you remember yeah. Costa Fine Town by Splinter? S- Splinter? Amazing. Yeah, I do, Alan. Yeah, there was and a few. Enough, we, we were at a, um, uh, a sort of hooting on the arranged by old school friends of mine uh, over Christmas. Yeah, where people just turn up with guitars and stuff like that. Ah, brilliant. And one of the guys there, he plays in a lot of bands, and he, uh, I was having a chat with him, mm. and he says he's in, um, like, a reformed version of Geordie. Yeah, I had Dave Hill in from Geordie about uh, a couple of months before the end of, of Night Owls on the other station, and mm. he was talking about how they were definitely going to get back together. They'd found a new vocalist that had the range of Brian Johnson, and I'm thinking, blame me, if that's true, that's a find and a half. It certainly is. Because he, he, he can scrape paint. You know, that's... <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> but no, hey, amazing. I love these chats anyway, Dave. Thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely no appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Pleasure to talk to you. Bless you, man. Hey, do you want to talk about the northern entertainment of, of any kind? We're getting a lot of stuff coming on about holiday disasters and what you've eaten and all that kind of thing. Ben Mabon said, had a couple of gigs over Christmas, went to one and got cancelled. And someone nearly drank all of my drink. Apart from that, I had a good one. Love the show. Thank you, Ben. We also asked you about what did your pet eat? Well, um, Harvey says, my greediest cat ever was a little rescue cat called Lucy. She would eat almost anything. I got home from work one winter's night. I was freezing cold, so I made myself a treacle sponge and custard. I could murder that right now. I was just about to tuck into my treat when the phone rang. Yes, you've guessed it. When I got back, my pudding was in the cat. Yours, Harvey. Thanks, Harvey. 
And uh, I've had very similar situations in my life with cats because they wait, they wait. They wait till you're distracted by something. Then in they strike. Also, Tim says, my German shepherd ate four TV remote controls when he was a puppy. Cost me a fortune on eBay to replace them. <laughs> that's, that's just madness. And also, do you remember we were talking to a lady in Australia last week on the show, and we were talking about the bushfires and how difficult it was for everybody. And this is coming on the back of it from BP. He says, hi, Alan. Undoubtedly, conditions are unusually severe in Australia, but I wonder how much urbanisation of the bush has exacerbated the situation. In the last 50 to 60 years, the population of Oz has increased a huge amount with developments mushrooming all over the place in amongst the gum and eucalyptus trees and scrub. Very nice until Mother Nature interferes. During 1957 and 1958, I served on a cargo ship on the Aussie coast, called from Newcastle, New South Wales, to Adelaide, and iron ore from Wyala to Port Kembia. And during the bushfire season, from far out to sea, we would often see the glow from bushfires stretching for miles north and south along the New South Wales and Victoria coastlines. It didn't appear to cause too much hardship, but I do remember once in Newcastle, New South Wales, not being able to see very far along the main street and gasping a bit for breath. It was a relief when I got back out to sea, says BL. And P.S. If there are any Yemeni Arabs still living in South Shields, please give them a shout out. They were absolutely great fellas. So there you go. Shout out to you guys. And if you are out there, pick up your telephone and give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Peace. The Voice of the North. Alan Robson's Night Owls. The phone in that gets you talking. Greatest hits radio. Now, we have one clue already away. Have you worked out what that is yet? What the French or pilots shout when they need help. Now, you've got to put all of these together and then tell me what links all of the answers. If you are clever enough to do that, then you will win. Angel has fallen. You've got to be quick as well and get yourself answered at the end of the show. So that's your first clue. Three more clues to come. Another thing I want to throw in. Uh, and it's just your personal opinion about the same sex dance. Apparently, H from Steps was on Strictly Come Dancing with a male partner. They had a dance. It was the first time ever uh, in the history of ever when a man's danced with a woman on, like, Saturday Night Telly, I think is the, the gist of it. And uh, H had a little cry. He's a good lad, H. We've had him in, and we're, you can hear the interview with him fairly soon. Um, he's just a nice fella, sincere. Um, was it all that? What's your view about if you go to a nightclub or a pub or a Christmas, New Year do that you were around over the, the season to be jolly? Did you see a couple of guys kissing a couple of women? I, I'm so used to it. It's not a, it genuinely is no kind of big deal. But who's upset by it? it I'd like to know... Who gets upset by seeing that kind of thing? I mean, I remember years ago having to go to uh, to is it Rock Shots, I think it was, on Blenheim Street, and you'd go to one of the gear nights where the music was usually pretty high octane, but you knew that there was going to be no trouble and nobody punching people in the head, and you'd have a, a really cool night. And also, don't forget our top 500... Over the last week, we've counted down the ultimate top 500 chart of the greatest hits, as voted for by you. It was Queen with Bohemian Rhapsody. It was no surprise to me that that got to the number one spot. But if you want to check out the entire chart, see what it is, you go to greatesthitsradio.co.uk and stay with us, because they're the songs you'll hear right here on your Greatest Hits Radio. And don't forget the morning mouldy mystery oldie. That is happening tomorrow morning again, and you can win a bit of money with Rossi. 
the greatest hits sound better on Greatest Hits Radio, as you've probably discovered thus far. Got a superstar coming up soon, but just before that, we've got Alison, who's in Anfield playing. Hi, Alison. Hi there, Alan. How Hello, darling. You? All the best to you. Thank you. So what are you calling about tonight? Well, at the beginning of the show, you mentioned about um, living with fibromyalgia. Apparently, there's an epidemic across the northeast of it, but some doctors are saying a lot of people use fibromyalgia as a, a fake thing because they can't prove it, they can't disprove it. Yeah, it, it's it's a really difficult one, but if there are cases happening like that, it's really sad for the people who are actually suffering from it. Right, I'm, it's always the genuine ones that suffer, but there's a lot yeah. of people trying it on and just just to get the you know so they don't have to work for the benefit. Yeah, the thing is, it's kind of like there are a lot of people with fibromyalgia who aren't claiming benefits because mm -hmm. they can't. Right, um, no, sure. Because it is kind of proven that there is something wrong because the doctors, they do a whole load of tests mm -hmm. and all come back clear. They all come back okay. Right. So then when it gets to the point where you're kind of saying, when I'm still in agony, I'm still hurting, I'm still fatigued, I'm still this, it's like, oh, it's fibromyalgia. Yeah, so it's, it's something they call something they can't get a handle on then. Exactly, yeah. It's kind of when they've exhausted everything else, and I think it all depends how good, like, the consultant is that you mm. see. Like, I recommend anybody who gets it not to just take your doctor's word for it. Mm. Because yeah. it's kind of a, it can be a, a good get out clause when they just can't be bothered to do all the tests to find out what it actually is. Well, this is the thing because I can remember when I worked in a, a different world years ago. I worked with the, um, not the job centre, but kind of the people behind the job centre, uh, getting people fixed up with work. And I often would come across somebody who you knew could lay like 30 flagstones down his path tomorrow if he needed to, yeah. but he wasn't going to. Instead, he was going to say, oh, me back. I, I can't yeah. I, I do it with my back. My back's been like this since... And you go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, he says he's had a bad back for the last five years. We've we've had a look on the screen. Everything looks like it's in place and working perfectly. But what can, what can you do, I suppose? How do you find out... How do you find a faker unless you... You go on their uh, social media accounts and, and find them, you know, in the Highland Games tossing a cable or something. That's that's the yeah, thing. It's, but it's good. It gives people like yourself with the real problem. People look at you and go, "Oh, she must be trying it on." Then I think it's it's kind of, it's a very fine line because it's kind of you can you can nearly see somebody that's got fibromyalgia and somebody that's in genuine pain. It's kind of, there's a lot, I lived for a lot of years and didn't tell anybody because I just thought it was easier to do that. Right. right. Because if I didn't tell anybody, but then it got to the point where I I always worked, so I was always on, I worked for the NHS. Right. So I was on an 18-hour flexible contract, wow. which works brilliant for somebody who's got fibromyalgia. You, you can't get those kind of things these days. Right. Um, so I kind of didn't tell anybody, so I just like got on. But then when it gets to the point when you have a flare-up mm. and you literally physically can't do the day-to-day -day tasks, right, right. that's when it gets really difficult for people because families, friends, they don't believe you. But this is it. But the thing is, if you go to your doctor, your doctor says, well, I've given you all these tests. You've flown through them. We can't see anything. You look like you're in, in perfect health. Uh, it's just what you see... Yeah. And uh, how how do you prove or disprove it? That's the thing. It's it's, it's down really, to down really to trust, difficult. isn't it? I suppose. Well, it, your it your doctor will know you over the years, I guess. So I think a lot of with fibromyalgia as well, like like one of my main things that that gets me when I'm having a flare up is actual touch. Right. So there are certain points on your body that if you touch them, literally, you hit the roof for right. no apparent reason. Right. And they're kind of the test points that the doctors can use. So, like, if you're sensitive, there's like in the back of like the back of your shoulders, your hips, um, the inside of your elbows. There's a few different points that, like, kind of you are more sensitive than somebody else. And if people touch those, unless you kind of went in and looked up the online and found out what it was mm. and kind of found those points, you wouldn't know that they were the points that that make you hit the roof. Right, right. But 
there are certain points, and I think that that test is that would be very hard to fake for somebody. Right, I get you. Because it's yeah, because sometimes with fibromyalgia, you can't even stand your clothes on you because your skin is so like your body is so painful. Right, it's it's just we've got to find a way to sort the wheat from the chaff, and it mm. it, it just seems that each case is different anyway. Uh, there's no general rule for, for anybody. Yeah. Your cases will be completely different to anybody else's. That's it. And what they've done is they've kind of publicised it, I think, and kind of made it a thing, but that's what they do. I, I, I'm not a great believer now. I used to be in kind of like the support groups and the kind of getting people together and, and, and kind of talking about all these things because I find that when you join things like that and when you're part of things like that, for some people it's a support, and I know that some people find that's the only way they can cope with it. But mm. for me, you kind of go in and you hear, oh, today I've got a headache, uh, my eyes are hurt, my mm. wrists are hurt, and I can't do this, I can't do the other. The following week, the person who didn't have it last week has it next week. Right, right. Because it's kind of like a, it, it's that environment of kind of looking at different symptoms, and now you can go online and like every other illness that is out there, like if you go online and search your symptoms, you can have a brain tumour, you can have every single cancer that's going on the no, book. And, if you, and people who look at fibromyalgia, you might get somebody who's really fit and healthy and looks at the list of fibromyalgia and goes, oh, Big I've got them. <laughs> I've yeah. got the majority of those symptoms. But until you actually have them in severity mm. and, you, and you kind of stop and think, no, actually... This, this is severe, this is not, this is just not your normal, like, oh, I've got a bit of a twinge in me yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's just the thing that I've noticed is that you should never, I, I bought years ago because I, I, I don't like going to the doctors if you can avoid okay. it because they look me a little, they, they find something when you go. So I, I've, tried, I've tried not to often, and yet I bought this book called The Reader's Digest Book of uh, Physical Health or, or domestic ailments or whatever it's called yeah. and it, it's it got like a symptom sort of, so the idea oh. is you go, oh right, so uh, headache, oh I've got a headache, fever oh, I've got, got a bit of a fever, that leads you to the next place, then you go yeah. body pain, oh I was stretching this morning, right sickness, oh I was sick last Thursday and <laughs> you put them all together and yeah. you, you're going to be dead by the end of the week, by the, exactly. whatever you put in there, so you should really not look at the internet, it's a it really is a bad move because it, it takes you to the worst possible scenario. It does. And I think that's why there's a lot of people a lot sicker these days. <laughs> it's, I do because they look on the internet and, they, and they're like, oh, I've got this, I've got the other. Yeah. And it's kind of like a badge of honour. And a lot of people kind of like, oh, I've got a bit. They rhyme the list. And I, I had up years ago, I used to be like this. I've kind of moved on from that now. But it's like, yeah. like, oh, I've got this and I've got the other. And they've diagnosed us with this and they've diagnosed with the other. And one thing that I've always said to everybody who have kind of been involved with is don't believe them. Mm. Because they're just another human being. Don't believe them and just live the best that you can live. It's funny because I, I remember I was, I was in because I had uh, trouble. Let me touch fake wood because I'm going to mention the heinous kidney stone yeah. <laughs> um, I was being dealt with for a kidney stone and I had to stay at this doctor's for a, a period of about, about two and a half hours and okay. a couple of women were sitting behind me and it was almost like well I've got this and it was like the York, the two Yorkshiremen or the three Yorkshiremen in the <laughs> Monty Python sketch where it says, I, I would dream of having a, a, a pain like that. I, I've, I've got this and I've got... It was like one up against the other. And it says, ah, well, yeah. la, well, last Thursday I was ill for almost an hour, non-stop. Oh, well, that's nothing. I had diarrhoea. And it, so it went. And they went in to see the doctor, the first one, came out, I mean, limped in, almost ran out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. fit and healthy now. The other one did exactly the same. She walked in with a stick. She walked out with a stick under her arm. And you're thinking, it's not as... I think as... she had another diagnosis. Well, maybe... <laughs> or maybe she was <laughs> topping up the, the, the benefits that she's already getting or whatever. It, but it's, to me, there's some people that just love to be poorly and they love the drama of it all. Yeah, the attention as well. Because it does, it, for a lot of people, it does give you... 
like a different kind of attention. For me, I don't like that attention. Right, sure. But it's kind of like what's fit and healthy for every... It's different for everybody. Yeah, that's true. That is so true. It's, it's kind of like now I look at things and I think, right, well, I am who I am and I've mm. got what I've got. Sure. And you get on with life the best you can because you, you kind of like listening to the other callers about like fitness and about eating and stuff like that. It's mm. like we're all so different. Yeah, yeah. That we all kind of get jump on these bandwagons of what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, how fitness should look for this person, mm-hmm. how fitness should look for that person. And it's kind of like one of the things um, years and years ago, um, I was part of a, um, when I worked for the NHS, a group called the Expert Patient Programme, which right. the name was absolutely shocking. <laughs> but one of the things that they did was like, they talked about exercise, and it was all for people living with like long term health conditions. Right. And like exercise, like people were talking about going out to the gym, should be doing so many squats, so many whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. and this lady came in and she was talking to us and she said, um, really, all you need to do is go backwards. And I was like, okay. She says, go back to what it used to be like and think about your housework and think about the things that need done in the house every day. What we've done over the years is we've looked and searched for things to make things convenient. Right. The easiest way to do it without bending and lifting, and the easiest way to kind of, like, yeah, yeah, right. do it. So she said that you can have your own fitness routine if you just kind of go back to basics. So if you have, a, like, a wooden floor or a lino floor, Sweet. get out on your hands and knees and wash it with a sponge and a bucket. Right. Okay. Get out and wash your windows. So instead of leaving your windows for the window cleaner or once every six months, get out and just with a sponge and a cloth, take us take the whole day to do it, but wash your own windows. When you vacuum, put sense. some and it's put cheap. music on. It's cheap, yep. absolutely. Yep. And you can build a routine into your day-to-day life, things that you're doing anyway mm. and things that you kind of but do them differently. It's like Hoover in the stairs and things like that. Like she was like, get on your hands and knees. But get up at every stay and get back on your hands and knees again. You're right. still hoovering the car, but you're still, but you're conscious of just thinking, I'll do it a little bit differently. Yeah. And that's that's very clever, you know. That, that's not that's not as daft as it sounds because. Ah, it's brilliant. It's what's kept me going over the years. I think that, I mean, kitchen floors and stuff, people be push them to one side and say, I'll do it at the weekend. Yeah. I'll there's get, a mess like, on it. There's a mess on it, but I'll leave it till them. the weekend because, yeah. you know, you put it off, put it off, put it off. But no, like, if you, if you do that every day. How many people now go out into their, like, back garden or into their, or into their street and sweep? That's they just a, don't yeah. do it. And yeah. the exercise you can get, if you use it correctly and don't, like, and kind of hold it correctly and, and use the right action, mm. the exercise routine you can get off just doing things around your house is absolutely amazing. Makes absolute sense. Hey, lovely catching up, Ali. Thank you very you much. Too, Alan. Thanks, Take my care. love. Bye bye. How good is that? There's a workout I think all of us can try. Ah! Call Alan Robson's Night Owls now. 0191 488 3188. This is Real Life Conversation with the voice of the North. Greatest Hits Radio. And we have just crossed the divide so you get another clue towards seeing if you can win some CDs. And, of course, Gerard Butler in Angel has fallen. Clue number one is what the French and pilots shout when they need help. Second clue, a card that you would buy in a social club based on a tabletop game where you can be tapping. Okay. Uh, That game. A card you'd buy in social clubs based on a tabletop game where you can be tapping. Or, I'm trying to make it even easier for you, Um, Layla was a massive greatest hit by Derek and a band that this is one of. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think that does it. Two clues down, two more clues to come. See if you can work out what the answer is. Mentioned a little bit before about that young girl in Cyprus who uh, I seem to think is in big, big trouble because she's made the wrong choice after talking to solicitors. And Lady Gaga has been in tears um, when she, it's brought back to her her rape trauma, and she suffered PTSD after being raped. 
And uh, I just think that the Home Office want to take a real close look at all of that and the potential to perhaps re-arrest those that uh, maybe should have a day in court. Innocent and proven guilty and all of that, but it is. it seems obvious to most people that something heinous went on there. And uh, I feel sorry for the victim. 0191 four double eight three one double eight. We got Matthew from Newcastle. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Alan. You right, mate? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Happy New Year, mate. Happy How are you? New Year to you. Did you get any new games? No, I got a I got a radio to listen to. So I listen to your station. Oh, fantastic! What a DAB one. A DB, you know, the Sony radios you can get oh, from the, the Sarah Lewis shop. Fantastic. Is it good? It's pretty good, yep. I tuned it in. I was, list, I was listening to the show last week. Hey, <laughs> hey, well done. Have you been out and about over Christmas and New Year? I'm out with Ian on Wednesday. I'm out with him on Wednesday. Right. Where are you going? Do you know yet? Don't know yet. Going somewhere very nice. Excellent. That sounds good. He probably might be listening on his DB radio, but he probably be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Donald Trump going to lose his job if he's being impeached, by the way? Uh, we're not sure about that yet. Uh, it's A lot of people are thinking that he, he might even stand to be president again next time round, but it's not doing him any good because yeah. obviously he's, yeah. he's committed this uh, attack on... An yeah. Iranian bloke, and that that could yeah. lead us all into a war if if we're not careful. Yeah. Understand, understand, he's caused a war, but he should be sacked. He shouldn't be allowed back in the White House. Donald Trump, Boris of... Johnson's went on holiday. Has I know, he I know, no, an, awful, an awful lot of people say the same thing about it. But yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Tell me about the, these new games you're getting, though. You you got a few games over um, Christmas as well. I played. Um, the Xbox One gets these like um, three sixty games for back compatibility, like the um, the games and that. Right. And you get to play them free if you've got a gold description. Excellent. It's a pretty good feature. Like if you got an Xbox three sixty game, it works on Xbox One. Is it is it like is a key for to unlock the game? Right. You just put the disc in, it downloads the file, and you're on the, you're running an Xbox three sixty game on Xbox One. Pretty good feature. I like it. Do you know what I mean? That's you know good. what I mean? I like the Call of Duty series. When the Call of when the when the Call of Duty series came to um came to the back and pack thing, I was amazed. I said, Oh, Call of Duty goes, Call of Duty four, Modern Warfare two is is pretty good, you know, it came to the um the back and pack list. I loved right. it. I yeah. love the Call of Duties. The new one's pretty good as well. I just wish to put zombies in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, zombies I know a lot of people that love all the yeah. zombie the zombie it's, games. The zombies it, it, it is, it is sad that there's all zombies in it, but you know, every Call of Duty, you can still buy the, um, three more things, you can buy the Xbox 360s today, you can buy Xbox 360s, their company discontinued them, but you can still buy them and play them online, you know what I mean? Sure. They're, still, they're still covered by the company, that's the nice thing, I love the Xbox 360 yeah, was, but sure. I'm surprised the producer hasn't got an Xbox 360, you could link up with him, you'd probably be, you, I'd probably beat him. <laughs> yeah, you probably would, because you're, you're good at these things now, though, you've had a lot of practice, haven't yeah. you? I have been practicing. I'm saying the weather's been nice. The weather's been nice, hasn't it? It's been a little bit sunny in that, you know That's what I mean? Great. I've been Absolutely. shouting at it. it um, yep. I've been watching um I've been watching that Vera programme on the telly. It's been pretty good, Vera. Oh yes, um, I have. That's you know the woman, goes, you know, you know, the woman who goes around the beach is not it don't cover the mirror, she's made his laugh. Because it's like saying Vera's like saying it's too late now, son. I've caught you out. You're arrested. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you know, there's going to be a new series of Vera on Sunday. Have you watched that Vera for Alan? It's like, it's uh, like a... I must admit, I haven't. I, I bumped into Vera once when I was yeah. travelling around. She was she was up on one of the beaches up beside yeah. Alan Mouth. Yeah, um, she's a nice lady. Didn't she's a nice lady? Yes, she you know, seems, seems so. Yeah, she must have been to more beaches more than me. I, I mean, what I may do, I may go to every single beach I've been to and then, and, then let, and then let you know how many beaches I've been to and then try and <laughs> catch up to her. I'll do the shout out. Shout out to my Stephanie. Shout out to Jimmy Murray. Shout out to Neil and Helen. Jane from Redditon. Linda from Barstead. What can I go in for, Alan? Well, you're in the hat for a uh, Night Owl's mug and there's also some CDs and DVDs yes. and stuff like that. Can I two more things? I yes, don't you can. Go on. Go on I don't want to be on because okay, I no, don't upset no, everybody. No problem. Okay. Um, um, yep. Have you been listening to um the now CDs? The now CDs. Well, I have over the years I have, yeah. yeah. when they came I like, up. 
I like the now CDs. I like now thirty now the now thirty CDs. Now, right. Now 31. I think they've got the, like, all the great CDs. Like, um, are they not CDs. up to about now 102 or I something? Think, I think they're up to that. I think they're well, up to that now, by the way. Yeah, it's good. By the way. Yeah, you definitely. Know what, I mean? uh -huh. what CDs have now have you got, Alan, the old collection? Uh, I've been listening to all that stuff just lately. Yeah. I've been listening yeah. to the uh, Brian Ferry's Greatest Hits, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. And I've been listening yeah. to an album by Bad Company called Burning Sky. Yeah. They're the two I've yeah. had lately. Alan, did you get that new David Gray album that came out in 2019? The brand new David Gray album. I out. did, yes, very good. It's good. I'm yeah. going to have a look at it. Nah, he's um, a, he's a good man. Thing. Um, you know, um, did you have a say in Wall's End, by the way? Terrible. I mean, I'd love to talk to somebody in Wall's End who yeah. went through that because apparently yeah. it yeah. was melting people's houses and melting some yeah. of their some of their yeah. own buildings and, and conservatories. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. yeah, I'm seeing that people in Wall's End are listening. Come on, night owls, and talk to Alan about you about the fire. We'll yeah, yeah, love to hear about it. Love to hear um, from One someone. more thing, and I'll go. Okay. You know, did you hear about the metros weren't running over Christmas, by the way? Yeah, of course, a lot it of was, problems. It's a bit annoying, really, that the metros weren't running because you know, you know them, they weren't running. Now that's the I time like, when people have, need the most as well. Yeah. Did, you hear about this, did you hear about um, people walked around in the swimming pool laughing? Yeah, that was yeah. awful. That was awful. I hey, know. lovely talking to you, Matthew. You on the YouTube for me, please. I'll make sure that we Good do. Night. Bye. Thanks, mate. Bye bye. There he is. They're also trying to keep you up to, with a lot of the news that's going about. Uh, there's been another killing by a shark uh, off the coast of Western Australia. Apparently, he was diving from a boat uh, one in the afternoon and he just didn't come back up. Um, the body hasn't been found. And according to the people that witnessed it, there was a woman on board the same boat. She had to be treated for shock. The guy went into the water and he received fatal injuries after being reported. She saw the great white shark trawling about. She saw a bit of bubbles in the water, didn't see the man. It's the 16th fatal shark attack off Western Australia since 2000. And you got to remember, it was only, uh, I think it was, it was the last April, the April before, a 17-year-old died in the same place where this one is while she was surfing with her dad off a place called Esperance. So uh, another great way and I do know there's a lot of people that are fairly straightforward say well this is where they live if you don't if you don't want to be eaten don't swim where they live and uh, well, there's a lot to be said for it judging by the amount that uh, that's losing their lives oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight get the calls in still time to get you on so many great songs on you two albums there's a version of that song on a live album called Rattle and Hum where there's a gospel choir in the background. It's the best version of that. One day we'll have to try and dig it out and play it for you. Also, we have lurking on the lane, I hope, Sean from Concerts, who uh, was trying to get on momentarily. So, fingers crossed, we have the man himself at the top of the mountain. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? Happy New Year to you. All the best, man. Thank you very much. Did you get drunk? <laughs> no, I must... Well, you see, I don't drink, so now the least thing that I have... And I did have a, a shot of whiskey on New Year's evening because it's the... Well, it's what you do in in the border, in the border country. Um, it's like an offence if you don't, if you're in somebody's <laughs> house. So I had, a, I had a glass that was probably... Four or five thimbles full, which is not very much. Uh, and I was, I could have been, if I'd had another one, I'd have been away with the Pixies. There's no question about it at all. <laughs> How did you have, what did you do over the New Year? Oh, I had a good day. I had a party across the road there and oh, enjoyed brilliant. myself. Good, good, good. But uh, I've been watching, I've been watching you on the telly there in concert. Like, I've been watching Simply Red, like. <laughs> Thanks very much. You hear the spitting image of a man. No, every, don't every... say that. <laughs> don't say that. I bet you wish he had his money. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Could you... Coming on to the arena, you couldn't sprank any tickets for us, could you? <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, we can ask. We can ask the question. But, um, uh, the, thing, oh, the thing is, I've, I've met him on a couple of occasions, he's... and even some of the members of his band 
who he's said... He's absolutely fantastic. He is, Vic. He said, are, are you two brothers? I'm thinking, no. <laughs> and I don't know who was more offended, me or him. <laughs> that was the thing. Uh, really yeah, funny. Yeah, the, the older he's getting, the, the more he's getting later. Right, I, I think that, that can't be a good thing then, really. <laughs> must, be the, must be the ginger hair that's coming out of his head. Well, we, there's no escape from it. The funny thing was, he did some he did some music. Um, oh, what was that song called? Night Nurse. Do you Night remember? Nurse, he did a song called Night Nurse, and he, he brought in a couple of like big reggae stars uh-huh. to, to work on it with him, and I thought he did such a... He was born to sing reggae, I think, make up now. What a voice. Is that on. the one that's on that advert for Night, night Nurse? I don't think so. I, I, oh. don't, I think he'd probably be too expensive for that. <laughs> They'd probably hire somebody cheaper to do that one. But it's the same song. It's the same song, It's I the think. same song, just not, uh, not his version of it. That's the thing. Oh, I didn't a... realise you were into Simply Red. Oh, dear me, yeah, he's fantastic, man. Oh, years Long and years and bit. years ago at Gateshead Stadium, I put them on, uh, put them on stage... And uh, it was one of the best gigs you've ever... Oh, I think the thing was, people didn't realise just how many hits they'd had in a row. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it would have been like, for your babies, the fairground. It just went on and on and on and on. From the, the early days of holding back uh, holding the, the back years. The years what die. a song that is. Oh, you know? it is. Die. Money's too tight to mention. I haven't got any of it. I, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> thanks for, for reminding me. <laughs> But he is yeah. outstanding. Like he had an orchestra the night there. I was watching oh, on the telly. Like, he's just something yeah, special. He, it was something that uh, Nicholas sent me headphones. Sean's been watching you on TV, and I'm thinking, <laughs> hell's teeth. I hope it's not the news or something. <laughs> Crime stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Is this something I need to know? I know, but I'm, I'm glad. Anything else when you're on then, Sean? Yeah, I'm on about America. What, what the hell is it going on in America? He's, he's going to send 4,500 troops over. Yes. Now, uh, do you not think that's, com- that's way, going way over the top, like, especially what he's done? Well, I remember before he became president and Obama was in, I remember him coming out and saying, it's only... People like Obama that will start a war. I'll make sure that there's never any wars on my watch. And he's done something now that's tantamount to declaring war with Iran. He's blown up their people in a foreign country, granted, uh, and he's claiming that, that this guy was a threat to American forces, and he can't prove it one way or another. No, he can no. say it, but he cannot prove it. Uh, so, uh, what do you think that that Britain Boris, should do? John, Boris Johnson's on the way of sending some troops all away. That's uh, we don't want to get involved in this. It's the it's the Tony Blair slippery slope, isn't it? Again, that's it the is. thing. It is. I think it's worrying. Well, to me, I've spoken to a lot of people who are Iranians, and they don't like the fact that their own country is ruled by religious people rather than politicians. Uh And I understand that. But it's for them to change it. It's not for us to wait in there and topple a government and say, we're going to put a different government. The people have to do it. Uh I don't think... Because, you know, the last time... uh, we. Well, I don't think you'll get into power the next time, uh, Trump, like... Well, in between impeachment and doing this, it, it begs a lot of questions. But it's just... The Iranians are saying... We could hit the White House, but it's definitely going to be on American soil. And uh-huh. then Trump says, if you kill anybody on American soil, we'll hit 52 sites in your country mm-hmm. and wipe out a lot of the population. And you're thinking, this, is, this isn't, it's not a game. You know, no, it's it, not a game. No. It's not a game, but he's playing it like, well, you do that and I'll do that. It's just a dangerous. You see, the drone thing. Uh-huh. Drones are heartless. It's not like uh, you know Jonesy and Dad's own. Could have seen the whites of their eyes. It's Aye. it's none of that. You're sitting in a room two thousand miles away, and something's flying overhead with a bomb on it Aye. that flies straight and takes out the guy and anybody that's within like five hundred yards of them. But what happens if it, the guy wasn't there? Well, then it would have been a drone strike on whoever was there. But bottom line is, they've took out a a leading light in their military, the Iranian military, and the Iranians have already, you know, we were already worried that they would 
pull out of the nuclear... You know, they said they were going to stop building nuclear weapons and they had a deal with yeah. America. And then Trump said, I'm not going to stick to that deal. I was uh, From that moment, I was thinking, that deal has kept the whole area relatively peaceful for uh, like for however many years. Then as soon as Trump doesn't do that, doesn't agree with it, suddenly it's all up in the air again and there's more fighting in Syria and more fighting in Afghanistan and more fighting in Iraq. Yeah. And now he has Iran. Ah, oh, blame me. I, I just don't want to see innocent people and our forces uh-huh. get hurt by this because, you know, if, if it goes the route that it looks like it's going, Iran's going to be the next one that everybody's wading into. And if you if you look at the uh, Iran- the way the Iranians live... If you went to any of their big cities, you would think this is just like Liverpool, this is just like Manchester, this yeah. just like, their their quality of life is high. Yeah. Now we bombed Iraq into the Stone Age. You uh-huh. know, we blew up all their electricity plants and then at the end of it left them without any electricity and expected them to thank us for it. You know, so what are we gonna do over there? And how yeah. are we gonna leave it? And do we have to pick? Who's in charge of foreign countries? Yeah. Because yeah. that's the question. And if if we can take out, by a drone strike, uh-huh. if we can take out their leading uh, politicians and military leaders, why can't other people take out our military leaders and politicians? Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's Trump standing on the, on the White House lawn. Who's to say that, you know, that that's not, not a target now necessarily? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They say it is. What do you think will happen? Think it'll all die down, or do you think this is oh, the, 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 the touch paper? Ju- I think it's just beginning, like. Right. I think it's just beginning. I, 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 like I say, I just hope this country doesn't get involved. But Boris Karloff, he's he's on he's on his way back from his holidays. Right. And he says he's going to send. Where's the reckon he's going to send tr- troops over from this country? Why, my God, if that do, you know what I mean? We want to stop out of these affairs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you see, the, the interesting thing is, he's, along with all of the, the Brexit stuff, believe, believe what he tells you or not, uh, I think it's hard to actually believe the guy at, at any stage because he's told so many porkies, but believe what he says or not. He said very early on that he wanted to make sure that every single penny went into the National Health Service. Now, you fire one missile, it's 100 grand. So how many uh, hundred grands is he not going to be putting in the National Health Service? Exactly. Because we're going to be in a foreign country throwing these things about. Exactly. He's probably a, he's probably a distant cousin of Trump anyway. <laughs> he's quite happy to to wipe his ass, isn't he? Well, it's <laughs> it's just I, I heard that uh, you know they're saying let's get a deal with America quickly to put the pressure yeah. on. Um, Europe, you know, so they give us a better deal for Brexit and what have you. Yeah, yeah. And and now, of course, America can say, oh, we're far too busy with this uh, to get involved with all of that. We'll have to wait till exactly. it's all done and dusted. And how many weeks, months, or years is that going to take? You know, exactly. It's, uh, there's always an excuse for all of the things that people promise not being done. Uh, but, uh, uh, no, it's just... Scary stuff, this man. I do. Th- I do oh, think I do. this is you're messing because yeah. you're not messing with like a a little tin pot country. I know no, a lot of people think they are. This this is a sophisticated, well armed nation. Exactly. And I just think you've got to be a bit careful who you prod with a stick. Well, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to watch you again. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. All the best. Don't go, don't go too red. I'll try my best. <laughs> Thanks again. Oh dear. As I said, I don't know what's more offensive. Uh, me looking like him or him looking like me. 0191 488 It is time now, of course, for something rather important that we describe as the blah.
is the blah. Well, we got other clans. We have Nicola from the Switchboard. Hello. Hello. And we also got Hollywood McShane, producer of the stars with a bit of a cough. Evening. Hi. <laughs> right, so let's see what's happening. We always start with the front pages of the news. Uh, whatever's going to be rammed hard through your letterbox in the morning. And we're starting off with the Daily Mirror. Gulf War 3 fears attack the White House. Iran targets Trump with threats and a £60 million bounty on Trump's head. Wow. And they row back, uh, they row back on nuke, the nuclear deal, raising weapons fears. Boris calls for calm as the US boosts troops in the Gulf. What do you think of it all? Are you scared by it? 60 million bounty, that's like, you know. On your head? Yeah. Somebody look for that, you know. I thought. know. I mean, maybe someone in the White House, you Just know. Just for his hairpiece. Just <laughs> yeah, put, put some poison in the glue. Daily Mail, delicious recipe pullout. Weight Watchers, they started that. And Johnson finally breaks silence on the crisis. He backs Trump, saying the UK won't lament the general's death, but he urges calm from all sides. Prime Minister walks the tightrope over Iran. So, um, Daily Express, Boris, we will not lament his death. He speaks out on the killing of a general as Iran offers £60 million bounty for Trump. That's a canny bit of money. The information uh, newspaper, HS2, real budget, out of control. They said it could cost as much as £40 billion more than original and uh, they say the figures have already been fiddled uh, it just looks like it's not going to happen as far as I'm concerned why don't they just scrap it and put the money into something that we can afford most than, people don't even aren't even bothered are they about it you could buy what you could get from London to Birmingham in six minutes quicker wow I mean for that kind of money billions of pounds um, no I don't think so and the Thames, we will kill UK troops, warns Iran. That's if UK troops are there. Um, so the question is, should we send them? What do you think? Well, it's not really our argument, is it? So I would stay out if I was them. And the possibility is, we I mean, we have the ability to stay out, but Britain tends to fall in line with the Americans. That's just what happens. The Guardian pressure grows on Trump to justify the Soleimani killing. And I don't, just don't know how you can justify it. The sun, as Iran rips up the nuclear deal, no tears for a terrorist. Prime Minister, the slain general killed thousands. Now the, the press, or the, the Tory press, are trying to justify the fact that they've killed somebody uh, from a foreign nation. The Daily Telegraph... Do not dare to strike at us, Johnson warns Iran. Uh, you see how this is this is how wars start, I have to say. Nasty. Daily Star. Brit Helen Shocker. Do you remember the, the lady Helen who went to space? She was a British astronaut. Space Girl says aliens are real. Ooh. There you go. That's a so, story we like. Something we've been saying for the longest time. You also see um, Andy Bell said that he was proposed um, an alien wanting to have sex with him and he went, oh no, I'm not going to have it. It's in the paper today. It was going to be me blah. But it, it wasn't. An alien. <laughs> an alien. Yeah, but he said no. I mean, would you say no if an alien asked you? Well, I'm not quite sure. I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> you've been. You've been propositioned by a few funny looking uh, ones. Yeah, funny it? looking <laughs> The Financial Times, Iran rolls back on the nuclear deal as the Iraqis seek removal of US troops. It's funny, but Iraq's next door. They've never been particularly friendly with Iran, but they've asked for all American troops out of their country because of what they've done. So it just shows you the Arab world will be shaken up again and will this lead to more terrorism? Uh, that's, that's what did it the last time. The Metro newspaper, get your troops out. Iraq's order to the US and Britain after the assassination. We want all Western troops out. So uh be interesting to see where that goes. Nicola, what have you got for us? Do you have many house plants? I have no house plants. Is that because you're not very good at looking after them? Yes. Well, this you probably need one of these, a hexa robot. So it looks like a little spider. 
you put your plant in the top of it and it what it does is it moves around the house to the sunlight if it's getting too much sun it'll move back to the shade how big is this like spider that. if you've got like a six foot well. yucca plant <laughs> i don't think you put something like that in because it might break its legs but yeah it just walks around it and takes photos and videos for you as well of your plant my dog might be running after it <laughs> bad one I mean, I don't have plants because I'm not very good at it, but if, I think if I had the dog, the dog would probably try and weigh on it. Because we, we, we've been away a lot over the over the, the years, so if you've got house plants, it's just another something just that will be you dead. Just imagine like, ten plants, and you walk in, these little the spider are things are walking them around. Over. No, you'd, you'd poo yourself when you're really in the middle <laughs> of the night. Bit. So what's your story? Yeah, this is the... The, um, the Foreign Office have released the requests that they had last year uh-huh. and there's some odd ones on there someone phoned them up and asked for a 50 cents phone number I don't know why <laughs> why but they obviously log everything and that was on their list right um, a complaint from a traveller about the quality of food on a, on a flight that's another one have you ever complained or asked any the foreign office for anything because they do I try and oblige but they don't on foreign office I've, I've contacted London because I've had problems getting a, a visa somewhere and I've contacted them and they sorted it out for me well someone left the he- headphones in France and the, <laughs> someone you know requested that they get them back for them a British couple in China who had engaged in the services of a sperm donor wanted the staff to verify the nationality of the sperm oh that's not good that's another one uh huh and um, yeah it's just daft things like that but you know, you always get the, the figures at the end of the year, so there'll be more blahs to come on that. Yeah. <laughs> they certainly will. But there's one thing that we have to kind of get into now, just briefly, and that is, of course, um, something happened last, well, was it the night before last? It was, it was the night before. Friday night. Friday night. Slash Saturday morning. Something, something happened, big stale, and uh, I just thought we would mention it because... I've written down what happened. This was <laughs> three o'clock in the morning, Nick. But it's actually about, about ten past. The phone rings. And I look at the phone, didn't answer it. Looked at the phone. Tony Mack. <laughs> Five past ten past three. I thought, oh, he must be in trouble. So I just texted him back saying, um, are you okay? And uh, he sent the thing back saying, sorry. That was all. And <laughs> so I thought... We, they might be, might be in trouble. So I, he rang again for a second time, and I've written down <laughs> the conversation. Oh, God. And uh, Tony, I'd, I'd like you to <laughs> put, to play your part. Now you got to remember that this guy was three sheets to the wind. Let me just tell you. And, and I can't I remember you. I, I wasn't to blame this time. No, I no. can't <laughs> believe it was Chris. Blame him. So anyway, uh, the phone picks up. This is genuinely the conversation. So, um, right, here we go. Hello? Hello. I don't know where I am. <laughs> you don't know where you are? What can you see? Central Station. <laughs> well, that's where you are then. I can't get a taxi and uh, no one will come and get me. They're all... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get in the queue. I can't. It's full of drunken... <laughs> well, you'll fit right in. But people... Oh, God, it's your but line. people are... All no one. Hang on. Oh. Yes. And they're all. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm a long way away or I'd come and get you. But then <laughs> he says, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's, it's Alan. How, and, are you, how are you on the end of me phone? <laughs> <laughs> Which is going to be the stupidest question in the world. How are you on the end of your phone? And I said, you rang me <laughs> twice. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. Um, Jen will think I'm a right. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, she won't. She'll think you're just drunk. I am drunk and everyone's blanking me. <laughs> I'm not blanking you. Can Look, can you walk home and clear your head? Yes, but it'll take me ages. But if you'd been in the queue, you'd be in a taxi now. But them in the queue are all drunk and... <laughs> they're looking at me. <laughs> it's because you're calling God. them... <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> I just want to get some sleep. Get in the queue. Oh, no, general think I'm a right. The opinion's beginning to change, <laughs> so get in the queue. You'll have a taxi in no time. Alan, I'm really sorry. I'm re- I am really sorry. Get a bloody taxi. <laughs> okay, love you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the entire conversation. 
in the middle of the night. I don't know whether you've ever had conversations like that. If you have, pick up your telephone, give us a call about them. That was 10 past three. Uh, Saturday morning, and it was just what I needed. 0191 four double eight three one double eight. Pick up your telephone. A star this way comes. This is real life conversation with the voice of the North. This is Night Owls with Alan Robson. Call 0191 four double eight three one double eight. Greatest Hits Radio. And Ian Balls just shared a link a little while ago, sure, a picture of one of the singles I released uh, back in the day, Alan Robson, Sack the Board, featuring the Flashing Blades. And it was 1989 comedy single. And it got to something like 43 in the charts, which wasn't too bad for then. <laughs> Thanks very much for sending it in. He had happy memories, uh, one and all. And also, uh, this is from Stacey, who's in hospital. Just to let you know, I'm in hospital with an infection since Thursday. Not eaten or drank properly, but tonight I'm so hungry and everybody's asleep. Looks like it's going to be a long night for me. Please tell Alan this message. Blimey. Nothing worse than when you're hungry and you can't get to something. And your belly's just rumbling. Let's give you the third clue, as we promised. And for that, you'll get uh, one of the top ten CDs of the moment, plus Gerard Butler and Morgan Freeman in the Blu-ray DVD, Angel Has Fallen. It's about a, a, it's a tenor in some stores, 16 in others, I noticed, which is crazy. So, to win the prize tonight, clue number one, what the French and pilots shout when they need help. The second clue, a card that you might buy in a social club based on a tabletop game where you can be tapping. Third clue, card game for one or a hit for Andy Williams. Third clue, card game for one or a hit for Andy Williams. Three clues down, one more clue to come. You'll have that within the next 20 minutes or so. But let's get back to the callers, and we're off to mask. We've got Paul there. Hiya, Paul. Hi, Roland. How are you doing? Good, mate. What you got for uh, us all? Uh, well, let me start by uh, wishing you and the team uh, Happy New Year, and I hope it's a good one for you all. Champion, man. Thank you. And to you. Anyway, it's about these uh, these BDs you were offered out in Jamaica from the fish, you know, the eyes. Yeah. Well, I've got a bit of a funny one. Uh, <laughs> sunrise, Chop Suey House, Mask High Street. Right. Done by the, the Michael and the Susie Wong. Right. Anyway, you know, we've known the family for donkeys. We, we just lived out the back of them. Right. So when I first moved here, you know, we used to take the kids to school to make sure they weren't bullied and all that. Lovely. Anyway, cut a long story short, uh, poor Michael, the cook, and, uh, you know, the owner of the business, mm. uh, he passed away. And with us being that close to the family, we were invited to the funeral. Right, so sweet. anyway, we were up in the skeleton, lovely spot, and you know all the friends and that were there, loads of people, yeah. and oh my God, so wild, you know, God love her. Yeah. You, know, you could have heard of him, mask from skeleton, yeah. but you know they were all there burning the paper money and yeah, yeah. burning paper cars as they were doing the Chinese funerals. Mm. Uh, and anyway, then it was to a meal through to where uh, Middlesbrough. Oh, it was well fancy, you know, with the round tables you can spin round and that. Yeah, brilliant. Strangely enough, they have like. Uh, some kind of ritual where everything's got to be like white, white food and it had to be boiled. You know, we were visualizing, uh, like, you know, spare ribs and yeah, no, yeah. oh, yeah, standard Chinese, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's like, it's very strange, everything white. Well, anyway, cut a bit of a long story short, chicken heads, oh, so like, cut yeah. off from the bottom of the chicken jaw, so you just got like the top half. But, you know, you could see the chicken's brain and, you know, the little red floppy thing on the top. Yeah, the comb. And the beef and oh, everything. Yeah. Well, they ate the lot. Like I say, to give us them on the table, you know, there was the mum, you know, all my brothers there. Like I say, we, we died. That, was sure. but, that would be the moment when... Them, the... We don't want them. I would... Everybody was, like, fighting for them. Oh, yeah, we love them. Oh, oh, oh. I oh, was just God. thinking when, when it came round to your point, you know, the circular... Table when it came round, I bet it started spinning when it got you. Get, get them past. Oh no, I couldn't cope with that. I couldn't believe it. You know, you've seen the brains and that, but it 
and beacon that as well. No, no, you no. know, this is what they do think, but no, no, not for us. I've eaten chicken feet as well. There's uh, <laughs> in in some cuisines, it's considered you know like a, a speciality thing. Yeah, and a the, lot of could just actually like suck on them, like we would yeah. like a funny oh. pop I tried it, but it's just, it's it's almost, you know. Can you remember back in the day when uh, Sarah Ferguson had just left Prince Andrew, and she got into a relationship with some banker, and it it was the time that people started talking about, do you or do you not suck your partner's toes? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't suck my partner's toes, but I'm sucking a chicken's <laughs> right now, and you're thinking, no. Oh. <laughs> not a good move. chicken not good. No, there's certain parts. But, I mean, in the north of England, they used to, back in, the, again, back in probably my grandparents' day, your great-grandparents' day, they, they used to eat pig's feet, pig's trotters, yeah, and oh, all of yeah. that kind of and, stuff. Uh, so. Mum and me nanny used to boil them up and, you know, make various things from them. Sheep's head for the weekend. <laughs> I didn't get that one time, but yeah, a lot of people apparently did. Yeah, you'd probably get offered the eyes. Oh, so about eyes. oh there's another one. I know, no, it's just. No. Hey, did you eat them fish eyes then? I had one. And right. I should. It was good manners to have two. I had. Yeah. I ate that that stuff, the coconut jelly, which was right. just yeah, nasty. I used to talk about that earlier. That's horrible. And yeah, I had one, I had one of the eyes, and I says, "No, no, you have one too." And the, <laughs> so the the lady of the house had had one eye, thinking, "Oh, well, that was nice. That was a nice well, thought of." No, when you say that, can you? Oh, oh yeah, you have two, one too. You know, being a bit polite. <laughs> I bet no, you didn't crunch it, did you? When I was when I crunched it because there's a bit of crunch in it and that's the lens apparently. Right. Oh. No, if you did crunch. I thought you might have just gone for the swallow. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done, but you don't want an eye looking around there. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh dear, yeah. terrifying. Hey, good stuff. Anything else, then, Paul? No, that's all. Thank you. Good man. Great to hear from you. Thanks for coming no, on. Thanks for talking to me now, Alan. Man. Take it easy. Bye bye. Paul from Mask, superstar he is, and he's tried. Wait, well, he didn't try. But it went past his table that uh, <laughs> the combs, chicken, or cox combs, I suppose they are, because a chicken doesn't get a comb, it's just a, just a cockerel. 0191 488 not something that I would have reached for either. We also got, oh, hang on, it's our Gene from Reckon. Hello, Gene! Uh, Hello! Uh, uh, Happy uh, New Year! Uh, yeah. Happy New Year to yeah. you too. You have a nice time. Yes, I'm very quiet up in and I'm there dancing. Well, you're not dancing. No, I'm not dancing. No. It's just an early night. Well, what's there? Very, 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 very Mercury story. Was good. Oh, was it? That's oh, good. Oh, that's good. Right? Champion. Oh, that's I good. I like that when you we were rock. You was good. That. Right. Yeah. Oh, that oh, that's good. So you had a good season to be jolly then? You yeah. enjoyed it all? That's good. Yeah. I'm going to be jolly on Christmas Day. Ah, uh-huh. right. And uh, my granddad came on the box day. We were there and his dad. And, uh, and the Christmas Day came on the box day. And the box day, they came to the house. 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 It's lovely. Ah, that's good. Good they news. They walk. Right. Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet. It's a time for the bands, though. That uh, people c- tend to forget it and think it's all about them, but yeah. it it is about the bands usually. Toys, yeah. Did he get that book of you know, that daily thing? You know, that's uh, all the telephone things in. Yes, it's lovely, perfect. Uh, We're right. using that. That's our main book here in the uh, show now. Oh. Oh, so well, thank yeah. you very much. That was a very sweet thing. Uh, thank you. Um, what's this one? I'm watching the uh, top here tonight. Nice. The weather turn. I'm going to pick up to up in, up in the pole. I've crossed that narrow road, narrow road. Yeah. The mountain will right up the top. Terrifying. God, I could be killed. Yeah, scary. Another, Some horrible roads. And then you get a truck trying to overtake you. Yeah, you know, another one. Horrifying. Yeah, yeah, some nasty yeah. ones. I yeah. once, I was once lucky enough to be uh, driving, and I think it was Cyprus. I'm fa- it might have been Crete, but I'm fairly sure it's Cyprus. And uh, there was a, a sign saying, come this way to visit the the home of the gods. 
Oh, yeah. a, Mount Olympus it was, oh, wherever yeah. Mount Olympus is. So I thought, oh, OK. So I drove up this mountain pass and it was very like the one you're talking about. Oh, and wow. and you could just look out the window and you could see like 2,000 yeah. feet right the way down. Wow. And I, I, it, you, you're driving at like three mile an hour because you don't want to die. No, no, and it, it took me about two and a half hours to mm. get to this Mount Olympus. And when I got there, all it was was a big, uh, like, white circular ball on the top of a hill that you weren't no. allowed into. No. There was a restaurant next door, like a, a pizzeria. Uh-huh. And then right beside that was the main road to Mount Olympus, and it took uh-huh. five minutes down the other side of the hill. Oh, so I'd driven for two and a half hours up mountains and all kinds. Funny, 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 funny. And nobody told me that you could get there in two, like... 20 minutes or whatever if you was there anybody in the car was there anybody in the yeah, car was there what? at the time uh-huh. yes oh, yeah. I, I don't know which wife it was but it was, a, <laughs> it, was an, it was an early wife <laughs> yeah it was an early wife yeah. there you go he tipped over in the blue car had tipped over he was right. yeah. running in the car like lucky go be scared go be careful definitely but that's what I call him um, What's the scariest thing that's happened to you in, on the roads then? Have you ever been involved yeah. with any dunches? Um, uh, I nearly, nearly. Got a branch of the taxi from going down the, down the, down the, down the road to get up. But I hit the taxi. You were very good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, yeah. it's a, a second away from death on, yeah, the, on the roads. On you. That's the thing. Right. Scary. How was I? I'm going to say this. Uh, I want that Donald Trump. He's got more fun than others. He's a stupid man. Yeah, it was funny because somebody said, is he just trying to to stay in office because no president has ever been sacked during a war? Mm. So he thinks, if I start a war, I can stay in power. Mm. Could, it, could it be that that's the, if that's the reason, that's the sickest reason I've he ever heard to go to war? He shouldn't. Yeah, definitely not. Mm. God. Definitely not. Yeah, well, I put a $60 million bounty on his head. Well, you know that? Well, I could be going, I put his turret on, I could go on the plane, go over there, have a bit of common sense. I know. It's, it's asking an awful lot in his case, though, isn't it? That's the thing. He's got no common sense. It doesn't seem so. Do you want to say hello to anybody then, Jean? Yeah, I'm going to turn the lens on the night. Oh. I said, I've got a ring to my phone now. Right. On my mobile. On your mobile thing. You know what? I'm going to turn the lens on the night. I'm going to turn the lens on the night. Tony Hadley was in there. In the Spandau group, Tony Hadley. Spandau Ballet. You know him and his wife, Shirley, when they said he caught and broke off to the young son. I told him my mail. Right. Ah, so do you like Spandau Ballet? Yeah, I do. I like that. Oh, okay. Right. I like that uh, baby, you know. Right, OK. I don't. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Anything else then, Jean? Uh, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Maxim Ballet group. Right. Being the chain, being two people knocked down by a bus. Why would you cross off that road? Oh, well, blame me. shouldn't do that. No, is she all right? No, I got injured in the hospital. And I crossed the side there. When they go to the left, they go up the road to Right. They go to where I live. Oh, they have to go up the cross there and all. Right. And a car, car. Come on, heck. Seems worry. to be the season of it, doesn't it, Jean? So I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll play some Spandau Ballet for you. Good that that yeah, makes sense. We can definitely yeah. do that. So thanks for calling, right. sweetie. See you later. Okay, Come bye. On. And, and, and do you know what I'll do? Instead of just playing a bit of music, I'll ask them about when they got back together. I think any musician will tell you the best part of the job is uh, it's great recording and spending time in a studio, but there's nothing like that that sort of um, the audience being in front of you and, and being playing live. That's the best bit of it. It gives you a chance to 
show people, of course, what you do, the tunes, but it also gives you a bit of a chance to show off and show people that actually you can cut the mustard. We, we do. We're pretty, even if I say so myself, we're, we're fairly good musicians. We, Tony's a, a phenomenal mm-hmm. singer, as we all Thank know. Thank you, Steve. Check his in the post. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, and, and it's just great. They're, they're, as Tony said, there's a real strong camaraderie within the band at the moment, and that reflects um, f- via the live show. It's, I it's, think there's a lot more respect, uh, I mean, amongst each other as musicians and with the realisation that, you know, no no one is greater than the other person and that, you know, a, you know, a band is unique. And uh, and I think we've come together and as we're older and wiser with life experiences and everything, we, we all realise that now. Well, I think I'm slightly greater. I think I'm the best. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's that's the, John, by it's the, the way. Immediate, <laughs> yeah, that's John. Immediate <laughs> gratification on stage, you know, you... you <laughs> You get it's cause and effect. You know, you work very hard in the studio, but no one claps at the end of anything. Uh, you know, on stage, you get to see their faces and then stand on a drum kit. How about that? Good stuff. I think it's time I should give you your fourth clue so we can get as many of you as possible ringing in for our competition. If you can work out what the answer is, of course. First clue what the French and pilots shout when they need help. Second clue. A card you'd buy in social clubs based on a tabletop game where you can be tapping. Third clue, card game for one or a hit for Andy Williams. Or a hit for Andy Williams. And the fourth clue, a sweet name to describe a cat. A sweet name to describe a cat. If you want to talk... About a cat in a sweet uh, uh, street, where, how would you describe it? A uh, sweet name to describe a cat. You've got four clues. The four answers all have one thing in common. Only one thing in common. What's it? Whip it out right now. Nicola is waiting to hear from you on 0191 488 If you've got any idea what the answer is, you should be calling us right now. Yeah, let's do some of that. Dave from Sunderland's up next. Hi, Dave. Hi, Alan. Hello there. How are you? Um, I haven't been too good, Alan. I've still been sick a lot lately. Oh, blame me. Have you been to the doctors then? I have. I just went to the doctors uh, Friday at Gun. Rain, what's he said? And, uh, he's trying us on some new tablets and lot. Right. Well, hopefully they'll sort you out then. So I've just started them there uh, yesterday. Ah, right. So it'll take two or three days to get uh, in your system. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fingers crossed. And, uh, then. Instead of them doing work, I might have to go back for another camera down. Oh no, you don't want that if you can avoid it. You don't. No, definitely and not. You know when you go to the doctors, you're always nervous to mention things, aren't you? No, you are. I mean, did you tell tell them everything that was the matter with you when you? Yeah, went? I did. I did. Uh, it's Cut best though, because they can they, they can only come up with uh, uh, with something to help you if you tell them everything that's wrong. Uh, that's the thing. I wasn't going to, but I told them I found a lump. Oh, blame me, where? On my testicles. Right, oh, that's scary. So I've got to go for a... He's making his appointment to go for a scan and that. Right. Now, the vast majority of these are just, like, cysts. Uh, little yeah. bits of flat, uh, fat that, that slide uh, around the body, because it happened to me, and I went... Uh, and you think the worst, don't you? Yeah. Uh, with me, it wasn't on the testicles. I, I, had a, I got a lump on my chest... Because men can get breast cancer. I don't know whether... Nobody says that, but, you know, uh-huh. you don't talk about it, but apparently that's true too. And I saw this lump, and you think the worst, and you ignore it for ages, uh-huh. and then you think, blame me, it's not moving, it's still there. I'm going to have to get it checked. When I got it checked, the the doctor said, oh, it's just a bit of fat that travels around the body, it's nothing to worry about. Uh-huh. And then you can go out of the surgery or the, the hospital feeling like a million dollars because you know you haven't got what you thought uh-huh. it was. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for you, Dave. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. But you, uh, did, you did the right thing telling him I because did. the sooner the, doctor said. the said sooner the you find these talent. things, the, the better it is. That's it. Uh-huh. I know. I've, Good stuff. I've been getting some more DVDs as well. Oh, excellent. Anyone? Um, name um, a few. I've got The Angel Has Fallen. Oh, that's a, it's a great film. I've got that. And I've got the Stan and Ollie film. All right. Is that any good? Yeah, it's quite good, yeah. Funny, is it? Yeah, it is. It is pretty good. That's good because those old-fashioned black and white things used to be on on the telly on Saturday mornings well, years ago. They did. Haven't seen much of um, Laurel and Hardy since, but it's uh, uh-huh. 
Interesting, interesting. My sister got us some for Christmas as well. Ah, it's nice. She Good. got us uh, Charlie's Angels, a full collection. Right. On uh, the life and times of Grizzly Adams. Oh, blame me, the, the bloke with the bear. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, excellent. Oh, that's good. Class, some classic old-fashioned telly. Uh, I haven't heard Matthew one for a bit. Is he all right, is he? He was on earlier tonight, so he's no uh, problem, I Dave. Him. Yeah, he's good. Hey, but good to hear from you. Stay good strong. Year. Don't uh, don't worry about anything because it's uh, it's not a problem until they tell you. Yeah, you know that's uh, that's the way that it is. So don't worry too much. Cheers, Alan. And give me a ring back and let me know as soon as you do. I will. Cheers, All right, Alan. man. Good luck. See ya. Thanks, See ya. man. Bye bye. Oh bless him. That's the the one thing you don't want. Uh, something else for him to worry about. Oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight. A lot of people are ringing in for the competition. A lot of people getting it wrong. Oh dear, dear. How can, now you see, I look at this and think, how can you get this one wrong? Uh, <laughs> if you if you know the answer, tonight could be whether you've ever rang before. Tonight would be a good chance for you to give us a ring and tell us what you think it is. Incidentally, I've just thought of something. You know that with the Iranian situation. Do you remember uh, Boris Johnson said before he was Prime Minister that he would do everything he could to get that jailed British mother out of prison in Iran. Well, now she thinks that the killing will make sure she gets a longer sentence and possibly never gets out. And what's Boris going to do about that? He's got no cards to play, has he? 01914883188. We have Anonymous from Washington. Hello, Anonymous. Hi, Alan. Hello. Oh, I know who this is. Hi, mate. How you I doing? How you doing? I know. Alan, just start by saying thank you. Uh, you got us out of a real a dark place not too long ago. Wow, well, thank uh, you. And it's hard for us to talk to you, but uh, friendly voice, etc. I'm glad you did. Thank you, man. Uh, the reason for me call, Alan, is, um, well, it was all this trouble that's happening now. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I feel like you know, I think you know how I am. And uh, I do. And you understand that, like, I lost my grandfather and uh, and the big one, day there. I lost my ex para. Uh -huh. I lost my dad in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I just yeah. feel guilty that I didn't, uh, I didn't fall, but I, <sighs> I didn't. And I produced a son that's out there now. Oh, and, uh, where is he? With the tools. Where is he's he? He's gone out there now. He's gone out there. Well, uh, we can't talk about that because uh -huh. he's 22, because uh -huh. he's, uh, I don't know if you know the regiment, but he's 22, so right, right. he's been there for a few weeks, uh -huh. and uh, I'm just petrified. No, nah, but... but uh, well, hey, well, I mean, the whole world's looking at what's happening at the present moment. I would love to think that common sense will prevail and everything can calm itself down again. I hope so. I hope so hope too. So. Hey, don't don't because ever there's... don't you ever feel though that that you should have because your your dad and your granddad fought and sadly didn't make it. The fact that you did you did survive should be celebrated. I feel I feel wrong. You shouldn't feel like like you you there's anything to, to blame you. Your family's paid enough. Oh, and it's because you, you I see feel when. Kid, I... But I when did me too. I did. I was graduated too, right? I went out. I did the Falklands at night in your world. Uh -huh. yeah, I did Bosnia, right? I did the first Gulf, and yet I'm still here. I should have. I should have given everything. No, well, no, you shouldn't. Think about this the other way. Your son's just gone. Should he give everything? Well, I know what you mean. You, 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 you don't mean, want that, like, and he wouldn't want that. He wouldn't yeah. want that of you, is the thing. Is I bet he's really glad that his his dad came back the hero that you did. Alan, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of him. Man. He, yeah. said, he went through my regiment right at the end of a twenty. I don't know if you know what twenty two regiment is, uh -huh. but he yes. ended up there, kid. And uh, uh -huh. I'm just so proud of him. So proud of him, bro. I think he's like. You know, if I if I force him into something, have I done? Have I made him do these he's, things? He's <laughs> following in the, he's following in his dad's footsteps because yeah. he was. But you see, he would only do that if he was proud of you. But I want to be out next to him. I'll... No, well, I mean that's that's natural. I think any any dad that served would say the same thing there. Yeah, yeah. 
if, 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 if it was age or whatever, I can pass the health thing or from it or I want to be up there with him and I want yeah. to get the job done. Yeah. Well, you see, I think that what we should really be saying is that you have done more than enough to to deserve to be safe and sound and back home again. And let's just hope that your lad can get through it unscathed. I, pr- I pray for her. I Absolutely. For her. We, we pray hope and her. pray that for exactly the same thing. Yeah. And, it, I you wish, know, it's... I it's, would say it's, it's like Donald Trump and all that, will it? you know, <laughs> the people who's moving the chessboard around, right? Yeah. I wish they were next to us when we did this. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they haven't got a clue what they're doing. Yeah. Well, they, Let Donald Trump send his sons out there. Yeah, they, well, that's the thing, isn't it? That's not the case. That's not. Yeah. That's never the case. And, and this is the, the bottom line. If if every American politician had to send their sons, you know, to, yeah. to fight trouble, out there, they'd, trouble nev- zone, a trouble zone. they'd yeah. never they'd never be a war if that was the case. You know, You're right, right kid. You're right. Just, You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. And yet we give, we, we take the oath, right? We give everything we've got. Mm-hmm. We're very patriotic. We give everything we've got to this country. Yeah. And look what's happening. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's yeah. just let's just hope I, he's back back soon and back safe. That's the main thing. I, I really hope so. I, I hope really so too. So hey, but you keep your head up. You know, you've got you've got nothing to prove to anybody. You've, I you, failed, you've I done. Failed, son, I failed. You've I no, failed. no, no. You you you're the you, people should be loading you. You know that people come back after fighting in these wars and you're treated horrifically. I think I, I don't think we you deserve the kind of treatment that you get. If you if you were in America, you'd you'd get free in everywhere. You get yeah. food everywhere. People would thank you for your service, <laughs> and it it doesn't happen yeah. in this country, and it yeah. bloody should. Not not even yet, not even yet. It, but it, it really happen. should. I, t- I, I look I, I look around, I walk around here, and I say people have like when I first joined up, right? When I say people are sort of eight, eight, nine, nine year old, uh-huh. uh, yeah. And I'm yeah. looking, at, I'm going, Jesus Christ, yeah. is it, is this what we? have like, this is what we come to. Where? No, I, yeah. I get it. I tell you what, I've got something that I want to play for you. I've got to take a quick break. After the break, I'm going to play something just for you. Make sure you. Brothers in arms. Oh, brothers in arms. And make, but just make sure you're listening because it's really important. Okay. Oh, well, huh? you do, yeah. and not good luck okay, to you. Sure. Love brothers to you and love to the sun. Oh my goodness! And he feels he shouldn't be with us because his dad and his granddad. Give the ultimate sacrifice. He feels that he should too. I've got a little something that I hope I'll, I'll lift him immediately after this. Alan Robson's The Night House on Greatest Hits.